If you have your Bibles, can you get them out so we can take a look together at what the Bible has to say? Today I'd like to talk about the Lord's Supper. And we're going to go to Luke chapter 22, and we're going to start in verse 14. Luke is your third gospel book in the New Testament, and we are going to chapter 22, and we're looking at verse 14. And chapter 22, verse 14 says, When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And we're going to stop there. And just looking back at verse 14, that the twelve apostles were with him. And verse 15 says that Jesus had a strong desire that he would eat the Passover with them before he suffered. Now, what suffering would he do? Well, this would talk, suffering is talking about the cross. Jesus was about to go to the cross to die for the sins of the world. Did you know that when Jesus died on the cross that he paid for every single person's sin? He died for every single sin that every person would ever commit. And let's go over to John chapter 1 verse 29 just to verify it with the Bible. Because I don't want to just tell you my words. We need to make sure that the Bible teaches what I'm saying. So let's go over to John chapter 1 verse 29. And it tells us the next day, John t saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So here's one of the verses that teaches that Jesus took the sin of the world away. That all, all people, that's not just to uh, believers only. This isn't only for some people. It's the sin of the world. And we're going to 1 John. There's a book in the back of the Bible called 1 John. And we're going to look at chapter 2, verse 2 here. So in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, we're going to see the same point, but expressed differently. So verse 2 says, And he himself, this is talking about Jesus, And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now this is talking about Jesus as being the propitiation. Propitiation means the satisfaction, the payment. And it says for our sins. This book, the first John, was written to believers. And when it says our sins, it's talking about believers. He's, he's the satisfaction for believers' sins, and not for ours only, not for believers only, but what? But also for the whole world. So Jesus paid the sins of, for the whole world. That means that whether they were past sins, future sins, present sins, Jesus paid them all for every single person. Now, we don't receive forgiveness of sins until we believe in Jesus as Savior, but once we believe in Jesus, we receive forgiveness of sins, everlasting life, and so many other benefits. But every person's sin has been paid for already. And that happened at the cross. And that was going to be a time of suffering. So we're going to back to Luke chapter 22. And in verse 15, is, Jesus said he wanted to eat this Passover before he suffered. And that was going to be the suffering of the cross. Now in verse 19, it says, And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, this was just a picture of his body. This is not really his body. It was just uh, bread, but it was a sign or a symbol or a picture of what Jesus was going to do on the cross. He was going to sacrifice his body and shed his blood, and they were going to eat this bread as a remembrance of Jesus. And that's what it says at the end of this verse 19. Do this in remembrance of me. So when we do the Lord's Supper in today, many churches do the Lord's Supper. When we do it, we do it as a remembrance of Jesus. Not, not any physical value, but for remembrance of Jesus. And it is something that we should do so we can remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And verse 20 says, likewise, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, the new covenant was the forgiveness of sins. And that's what happens when we believe in Jesus as Savior, that we receive the forgiveness of sins. And here, he's saying that this cup 
is the new covenant in my blood. This was once again just a picture of what Jesus was going to do on the cross. The cup that we use at the Lord's Supper uh, is not Jesus' physical blood. It doesn't transform into his blood. It is just a, simply a picture of what Jesus did at the cross, and he shed his blood for us, and that was necessary for us to receive everlasting life and to receive forgiveness of sins. But we need to believe in Jesus to have that forgiveness and to have everlasting life. And that's the important thing. So doing these things help us remember that, but it has no connection with receiving everlasting life. This is just a picture of it. Now, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. And 1 Corinthians is in your New Testament, it's going back a little bit, but about halfway through your New Testament, it's after the Gospels and Romans, we have Acts and Romans, and then we find 1 Corinthians, and we're going to 1 Corinthians, and we're going to chapter 11, and it says in verse 23. So we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, and it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Now, let's just stop there for a moment because it talks, this is exactly what was happening in Luke when Jesus was initiating this. And that he broke, in verse 24, he broke the bread and said, take, eat this is my body and do this in remembrance of me. So when we do it, it's to remember Jesus. And then verse 25, in the same manner, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do, and it says, as often as you drink it. So this is not like a one-time thing that, like water baptism, we do one time after we believe in Jesus to show it's a picture of our new life in Jesus. And we should do that to be a disciple. Not, no connection with salvation, no connection with uh, receiving everlasting life, salvation. But it is a picture and it is a discipleship, um, something we should do to be a follower of Jesus. Uh, the Lord's Supper is something we should do as a follower of Jesus. It has no connection with receiving everlasting life, but to be a follower of Jesus, we should do this. And it says, do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It's to remember Jesus. And that's what verse 26 says. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So it's something that we're looking forward to that he's coming back. And that's what it's saying that in the second coming and really the rapture, but the rapture in the second coming, until that happens, we should be doing the Lord's Supper. It doesn't tell us how many times. Should it be daily? Should it be weekly? Should it be monthly? Uh, even yearly? It's, it's really up to you. Nobody really has the specific number. Some churches do it weekly. Some churches do it monthly. It doesn't really matter as long as you do it. And when you do it, it's as a reminder of what Jesus has done. And you're proclaiming that this had happened till the, till the Lord comes back. And let's continue on in verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So we should not be taking the Lord's Supper in the unworthy manner. So let's see what unworthy manner might be. Verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Now let's stop there for a moment, because it's saying in verse 28 that we should examine ourselves. We should examine ourselves to see if we have sin in our life. And if we have sin in our life, we should confess it to the Lord and make it right between us and the Lord. And then we will be drinking and eating in a way that is worthy of receiving the, the picture of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. And verse 29, is that's what it's saying. That if you eat it in an unworthy manner, you're bringing judgment to yourself because you're not really treating it as a precious time. In verse 30, Many people in the Corinthian church were doing it in an unworthy manner and they were becoming sick and even dying because the Lord was judging them. The Lord was judging them and it's a serious issue to not take the Lord's Supper seriously. In verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So if we try to make things right between us and the Lord before we take of the Lord's Supper, that is the correct thing we do and the Lord will not judge us the way that he was judging the Corinthians here. 
in verse 32, but when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Well, apparently these Corinthians were taking the Lord's Supper, but not even waiting for the other church members. They were so hungry, they would just eat and probably eat too much. And Paul's saying, this is not what we are supposed to do. This isn't what the Lord's Supper is about. The Lord's Supper should be done in a worthy manner to show respect to the Lord. And we should be very respectful to the Lord. He, he's the number one priority, and we should show great respect when we gather together to take the Lord's Supper. And I hope you're taking part of the Lord's Supper as often as you can, and I hope that you have believed in Jesus as Savior. If you're not a believer in Jesus as Savior, then you really have no reason to take the Lord's Supper because it's it's something that only believers should do, just like water baptism should only be done by a believer. So if you have not believed in Jesus, research, search the scriptures, search the Bible until you're sure that Jesus is the Christ and then believe in him. And then after that, you should be water baptized. You should take of the Lord's Supper. And I hope you do. Anyways, thank you for joining me for this Bible study. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tell your friends and family about it and join me for my other Bible study.